that escalated really quickly. So what's up, my favorite PewTubers? Today, we're gonna be diving into something that is completely outside of my comfort zone. This is really something that I've really been wanting to do for a really long time, getting into revolvers. And it's funny how gun people can be, like myself included. I've noticed if we like one type of gun, we can't like another type of gun. You know, for example, like 1911 fanboys, they are like forbidden to liking polymer pistols or Glocks or what have you. And then if you are an AK-47 guy, you are forbidden to like AR-15s. And then typically there's a little bit of a spat between the revolver guys and the semi-automatic guys. You know, it's, just, it's an easy thing to get into, but I really wanted to step outside of my comfort zone and get into a revolver. But I couldn't just get any old revolver. I wanted to get one that was set up for home defense. And that's something that I kind of wanted to talk about today is what makes a good home defense gun anyway. I picked up the Smith & Wesson m and R8. And you've probably seen these floating around on the internet before. There's actually two different models that look almost identical. There's just a very um, minute differences, which we'll talk about here in a little bit when we dive up close. Basically, that is the M&P R8 and the M&P TRR8. They're based off of the N-Series frame from uh, Smith & Wesson. I believe it's the 627, 629 model. They're very similar to those. To be really honest with you guys, this is my very first experience with a revolver. Now, don't get me wrong, I fired a revolver I think it was a couple of years ago. I think it was the Taurus Judge and I just didn't like it. I didn't like the way the trigger feels. You know, revolvers can be kind of hard to grip, especially if you're coming from a semi-auto. And just wait until you see the range footage, man. It's pretty hilarious. But let's stop wasting time. Let's dive up close. So here we are guys, we are up close with the M&P R8, which is pretty darn crazy looking. Just wanted to show you real quick what comes in the box, minus the Vortex Viper, but I just didn't feel like taking that off. In the box, you know, you get your average run of the mill stuff, you know, you get a little lock, you get a manual, and here you get these little plugs. There are little plugs here, as well as two keys and two moon clips. What those plugs are for is up here on the top of this, you can see those screws right there. That is what holds this rail onto the top. So if you don't wanna run that, you take those out and you put in those little plugs. The little keys right here, you can actually lock this gun right here where no one can operate it. That's a nice little safety feature to have. Aside from that, there's nothing really left in the box so let's get that out of the way. What makes this one, I guess, different, it's a tactical police SWAT quote unquote thing. There's some kind of story floating around about how the SWAT team of some police department approached Smith & Wesson about making them a revolver. I don't know the whole story and nobody's ever been able to verify it. So we're not gonna go there. Like I mentioned earlier, this one is basically a lot like their 627 model but there's a lot of differences with it, mainly being you got this top rail as well as the rail down here at the bottom. The frame is actually made out of scandium and it's got this beautiful matte texture to it. I've already scratched it right here. I don't know how I scratched it, but I did. No biggie. It's got a beautiful finish on it. It looks like, and I, I don't know this for sure because it has Smith & Wesson's logos on it, but it looks like this is a Hogue grip because it looks and feels identical to the one I have on my AR-15. Could be wrong about that, but it definitely feels super nice in the hand, very ergonomic. It also has the performance center action as well as the performance center trigger that's in here. This trigger is kind of a very interesting trigger. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. You got these V sights on here. So the rear sight has got that V shape. The front sight has a dot. I believe the TRR8 has a copper or a brass front sight. I'm not 100% sure. Now, something I noticed about this was I can't even get a good gauge on how heavy this trigger is in double action mode because my scale only goes up to eight pounds and this is way beyond eight pounds. I'm guessing it's about 12 pounds, but we can test the single action and that's what we're going to do here in a second. Also, I bought out the uh, Surefire XH35 weapon light so we can check that out. I'm hoping they make some kind of an extension for this and we'll talk about that in a second. But that's kind of what it looks like, you know, with all the, the tactical assessment accessories on it. I don't know if that means anything to any of you guys. The in-series frame, because they're so much bigger, they hold eight rounds of 357 Magnum. Not too bad. I mean, eight rounds is legit. Push this up here and that's how you eject your shells. 
here's the trigger pull. Now I will say it does have the performance center trigger in it, but like I said, it is God awful heavy watch. So just watch for smoothness. The interesting thing about this trigger is the initial part of the pull here is the heaviest part. And as you get going, it gets lighter. It's kind of like you started at the very, you're going up a hill, but you get over that hill really quickly. Then it's downhill from about here to the brake. Very smooth though. The single action is very nice. Check this out. I mean, you couldn't even see that. So short. Let's see what that reads. I, I don't remember. That one pulled right over four pounds. Let's try that one more time. That one pulled just under four pounds. So I'm guessing it's around a four pound pull, but you guys saw how short that is. I mean, that's the lightest four pound trigger I've ever felt because there's no travel to it. Beautiful. I got the Vortex Viper on it right now. I'm just kind of running that as the red dot. This is, this is just an easy red dot for me to take on and off uh, various types of guns that I have. So that's why I got that on there, but see what it looks like with the dot. So you can see it right there. You know, obviously it's gonna look a lot bigger on camera because I'm focused up close. This thing is pretty legit. So let's go over some range footage. Let's talk about what I think about this, if I think it's worth the money, and if it's a good option for home defense. Back up top. So what do you guys think of the MMP R8? You know, I'll be really honest, I'm kind of undecided about it right now. It's definitely a completely different experience as far as shooting a semi-auto handgun and then going into the revolver. The one thing that I really struggled with, and maybe you have too, the grip. Finding a good place to put your thumbs can be hard. I've seen a, a few people say, put your right thumb under your left thumb and then fire like this. But I just have a really hard time getting my support hand to get enough grip. And when I'm firing it, I really feel like my strong hand is taking the brute force of the recoil. You know, versus with a semi-auto, I feel like I have it well balanced between both of them. Maybe that's a training issue. If you have any types of tips or tricks, or maybe you know of a video that talks about good grip on a revolver, then hey, let me know, because I know that it's possible to shoot these fast and to shoot these really reliably. I did watch Gary Michalek's video about it, but for some reason, like I just didn't understand what he was saying with the thumb thing. It was just throwing me off big time. But there are a couple of things you really gotta consider when you're trying to grip this thing is, you know, right here in front of the cylinder, I know you don't wanna have your fingers around around here because of the explosion and the fire that can come down will can either blow your finger off and or just burn the crap out of it. So you definitely don't want to do that. So the main advantage that this gun has over say their six series, their 627, 629, is it has integration of the tactical rail on the bottom right here, as well as on the top. Now, if you don't like the tactical rail on the top, completely removable, you know, like I showed you up close. So on this model, the R8, you can't remove this pick rail right here. On the TRR8, it's just a screw in design, kind of like the top rail. That's mainly the only real difference between the two. Now, one thing that's for certain is, you know, nobody really has ever doubted the stopping power, quote unquote, or just the effectiveness of the 357 Magnum. Nobody ever questions that. Everybody's like, oh, okay. It's not like nine millimeter where people were like, oh, that's a pussy round. Definitely does have a lot more recoil to it, but being in such a heavy gun, it's not that bad. I like the fact that this gun holds eight rounds versus five, six, seven rounds. It actually holds more rounds than a Glock 43. You know, if you're carrying a Glock 43 without an extra mag and you're comfortable with that, hey, you might be comfortable with something like this as maybe your nightstand gun or your home defense gun. You definitely don't want to carry this thing. This thing is huge. Even without everything on it, I mean, you would just, you'd have to carry this OWB. There would be no inside the waistband concealed carrying with this bad boy, but it's definitely a lot of fun. I haven't seen too many other Smith & Wesson revolvers that are in this matte finish that, that we have on here. I've seen them in the shiny finish or like a blued finish, but I've never seen them in this matte black. That's definitely something different. I think it's really awesome though that you could put a red dot on it. And I really think that this is a badass 
home defense gun. So let's talk about home defense guns real quick and what makes a decent home defense gun. These are just gonna be what my my favorite things are that make a good home defense gun. Maybe yours are a little bit different. Maybe you have different needs, things of that nature. Number one for me, you just need to be proficient with it. Even if it's a Ruger Mark IV. The funny thing is more people are actually killed with a 22 long rifle than any other caliber. Well, the main reason is, is more people have access to it. More people have grandpa's rifle, but it just goes to show caliber choice, although it is important, it's not always the, lim the most limiting factor. Which brings me to my next point, which is reliability. The downside with 22 long rifle is, especially with a semi-auto, is it can be finicky and unreliable. With semi-auto, you can get jams and a lot of light strikes. And then if you're using something that's not semi-auto, you still have that chance of getting a dud that doesn't go off. 22 long rifle is not typically the caliber that I choose. Aside from being proficient and having the right caliber, you know, having the right gun always makes a difference. Having a gun that you're comfortable with, a gun that you know you can put rounds on target with. Right now, I wouldn't use this for home defense, not until I'm proficient with it. You know, the good thing about a revolver is it can't jam on you. And it can jam, you know, theoretically, the cylinder could probably get stuck, but if you don't have a reciprocating slide, you're not loading another round, you're just spinning a wheel. So the reliability is typically there with a revolver. The next reason I think it's a good home defense weapon is because of the Picatinny rails. We can add a light to it now. Now we can clear the house and things of that nature. The downside to that though is because this is so far out, we can't do momentary easily. So like with this one, for example, I can reach out and I can switch my momentary while holding it, you know, in the firing position. So that's something that's huge. However, with this one, unless we can figure out a way to get an extension and maybe put a switch up under here or up here, I don't really know if you can get momentary with. So until I figure that out, I don't know about the light situation. Uh, the red dot though, that's really cool. I really like red dots. As you guys know, I carry them on this gun. If you've watched any of my other videos before, you guys already know, like I love carrying with Trijicon RMRs and red dots. They just take a lot of the guesswork out of sighting things in, especially if you're under stress, because when you're under stress, the paradox of it all is when we go to the range and we're practicing, everyone says, focus on that front sight, focus on that front sight. But if you have an attacker coming towards you, now all of a sudden you're gonna be focused on the target and not that front sight. Well, that's what a red dot allows you to do. It allows you to be threat focused instead of front sight focused. And so that's another thing that I think, regardless of what gun you choose, I think a red dot will benefit anyone, even if you're using an AR-15 what have you. And the next thing that makes a good like home defense type gun is having the right ammunition in your gun. You know, typically hollow points are preferred because if it hits an intruder, it's not going to go through them and possibly hit someone else. Aside from that, I mean, I definitely do need to get a lot more proficient with this guy before I ever think about trying to defend my life with it. We're going to be doing more stuff to this. I might look into another set of grips. We also are going to be talking to Apex about getting a better trigger in it because this double action, it sucks balls. I mean, it is very smooth. Smooth, I will say that like super smooth. It is a performance center trigger, so it better be smooth, but it's probably like 12 or 13 pounds. I don't know. I need to get a new trigger scale just to read this one. Love to hear your feedback about it. Let me know what you think down in the comments section, guys. But until next time, I love you and you guys stay sexy.